Okay, to get from one menu item to the next, you'll activate the left area of the multi-selector. That allows you to then scroll up or down from one menu to the next. Once you've highlighted the menu that you want to get into, you just scroll to the right and highlight the top menu item. And that one happens to be Shooting Menu Bank. In this setting, you've got actually four different banks where you can come into this camera and program all of the custom settings. You can even rename them. So maybe you shoot sports in the morning and weddings in the evening. Well, you're going to have your camera set up differently for mm -hmm. each of those situations. And rather than going through the menu and having to set up everything each time and possibly forgetting a setting, you can pre-program some of your favorite settings and the way you shoot for four different circumstances. And again, you can name them. So you could call one sports, one portraits, one landscapes, whatever it is, the type of things you shoot. We'll scroll to the left to get out of there. The next one down. Now this is a great one to know as well because it's called the reset shooting menu. A lot of people are really nervous about going through the menus and making settings for fear they're going to set something that they didn't want to and not know how to get back out or what the default was. Well, you simply go into the reset shooting menu, scroll it over, arrow up, and then depress the center button and the camera now just reset everything to its factory default, the way it was when you opened it in the box. The next one is the active folder. You can actually number the folders like we had talked about so that you've got different folders within one card. Now for my purposes, I like everything just in one card. I do my editing and my sorting and all that later mm -hmm. on. But you do have the option of having multiple folders within the same card. So what that affects is whenever you put your card into the computer to download the images, you know, there's always the DCIM folder, and then inside that there's you know, a folder with numbers and letters. Mm -hmm. That's where you rename that folder, right? Exactly. Okay. And, you, and then when you get to that point, you're going to have more than one folder. Gotcha. So you've got that option. The next one down, file naming. And as Brad just mentioned, the default naming is DSC. So it's going to start out DSC and then a number sequence. Well, that's fine. But the thing that's really cool about this is that you can go in and give it your own name, any name you choose. Well, in my case, I use my initials so that then whenever I look at the image, I instantly know that this is one of my cameras. And not only do I use my initials, but then I give it a number because I happen to have more than one camera. So each one is XL, which is an abbreviation of my name, and then one or two, etc. So now somebody hands me a couple of, you know, a card with some images of me or something, and I look at it, I know those aren't mine because it doesn't have my name on them. But you're limited to three letters there. It's three not, letters. It's not like supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Expialidocious. That. Exactly. <laughs> limited to three. However, further on, we're going to find another section where you can actually put in your entire name if you want, oh. which is very cool. So let's go back to the menu. Our next one is image quality. Now, you're going to find that as I'm going through some of these menu items, there are, if you will, redundant areas where I've already talked about those on the external part of the camera in the buttons and dials. Well, that's great. You can actually set them up in menu, and then some of your most used menu items happen to be out here on the external mm -hmm. of the camera. So you don't have to wade through all these menus right. to quickly change the quality or, say, the ISO, things like that. Again, on the image quality, you have the option of shooting in RAW or JPEG, or you could actually shoot RAW plus JPEG. Now, as Brad mentioned, there's a real easy way of making thumbnails or small JPEGs from your RAW files. So depending on your own needs, you may or may not need to do that. Right. I used to shoot RAW plus JPEG simply for editing purposes because my software program nested the two together. I was only looking at the JPEGs mm -hmm. and it was a lot quicker to cycle through JPEGs and have it build the thumbnails. Because it's just faster for your software to work with smaller files than the huge, you know, 25 megabyte. Precisely. Files. So now, though, the programs are getting so much faster. The mm -hmm. computers are getting faster. I'm currently only shooting in RAW. Now, it's not a big deal, but I still get several more images per card by not shooting the mm -hmm. JPEG as well. Our next setting, besides image quality, you have image size. Now this is only applicable to people that are shooting in the JPEG format. And when you're shooting in JPEG, 
we talked earlier about how you have the basic, the normal, and the fine. So that's the resolution. Now you also have the ability to select the image size of that JPEG. Well, if you're shooting in the JPEG fine and you're not shooting raw at all and you want optimum quality, I would go to the JPEG fine and then in the image size go to the large. Again though, if you're doing small stuff that you're just trying to email or for web base only, it's up to you to decide just how many images and what resolution that you want. Because as you find, the smaller the file size, the more pictures that you get on a card. And as Maury just mentioned, in, on the image size, it actually gives you the pixel dimensions. You know, like, let's see, large is 4256 by 2832, and it's 12 megabytes. Exactly. So, you know, if you think, oh, well, that's too large for my needs, scale it down. That's right. And while I keep talking about resolution and quality and how I shoot to get the optimum quality and resolution, that's because I never know when I'm going to have a client that wants a really large print for output or just the fact that I love to play in Photoshop and do creative work. And the larger the file there, the more capabilities I have to easily get a lot of resolution out of the image. Again, if I were shooting for eBay or web only, I'm not going to shoot at a really high resolution because then I'm just going to have to downsize it later anyway. Because you're not going to be making a 24 by 30 print of used photo gear. Exactly. That's right. So you have to make up your own mind. What works best for your shooting style and your needs?